Ladies and gentlemen, shalom and good evening from Athens, Greece. This is Amir Tsarfati and today it is Wednesday, April 11th, 2018 and we are live reporting uh, from Athens but uh, the eyes of the whole world are actually towards the uh, uh, city of Damascus and Syria and the rest of the Middle East. Over the last few, uh, we're going to start with a prayer and then uh, let's got, get into our message. So, Father, we thank you so much that you do not want your children to be in the darkness, that you want to reveal your plans to your people. Father, we thank you that uh, you declare the end from the beginning. And Father, we also know that you are the Lord of peace, the Prince of peace, and that you are the one that gives peace that surpasses all understanding to your children. Father, we ask that uh, this uh, update today will, uh, will bring hope and will bring uh, uh, calmness and will also bring peace to the heart of people, understanding that all that is happening around the world happens for a reason, it is foretold, and we are watching things happening that are not surprising you. And as you described in your word, these things are to happen just at the very last hour. So we thank you and we bless you this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think uh, tonight we have a record number of viewers. Um, from all over the world, and I believe that the eyes are of the whole world are, as I said, facing Damascus right now. Um, just the update of the last few minutes, just so you know, um, Vladimir Putin understands that through war, he is not going to win. He also understands that in the White House, we've got someone extremely serious and determined to follow up uh, upon uh, his um, um, promises from last time that if chemical weapon is going to be used against civilians in Syria, America will not sit and do nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening Israel is marking the Memorial Day for the Holocaust. The nation of Israel is mourning over the next 24 hours in many different memorial services over the loss of six million Jewish people that predominantly were gassed by a very vicious dictator. Ladies and gentlemen, we understand what it means to be uh, victims of crazy, crazy dictator. And we also understand what it means to be helpless and to not receive a single support from anyone around us. We vowed and we decided not to let that happen, not to us again, and certainly not to allow that to happen to other people around. Now, let me make it very clear before I continue to what is going on right now. A lot of people were asking me, Amir, was it Israel that attacked in Syria? And I said, yes, Israel attacked in Syria. But then I also told you a couple of days ago that we did not attack a Syrian target per se. We actually attacked in that T-4 air base in, a, um, in, in that area. We attacked an Iranian target. Let's make it very clear. Israel is not going to allow Iran to entrench itself in Syria. We said that before, and we're saying that again. Iran vows to destroy Israel. Iran says that Israel should be erased from the map. Eighty years after the Holocaust, we have a nation not far away from here that wants to destroy us once again, wants to drop nukes on us once again. They want to eliminate the Jews from the face of the earth, and we're not going to allow them. Now, if they stay where they belong in Iran, that's fine, but they are advancing more and more and more, and they're situated right now now not too far away from our border and we said to the whole world we will not allow that to happen the middle of, of February they tried their luck by sending a drone 
um, into our territory. We shut down the drone, we immediately attacked the airbase from where the drone was sent, and then we gathered some more information and we realized that in that airbase, the T-4 airbase, there was a whole hangar right there where the Iranians are engaged in a very secret uh, program in producing those drones and, um, and basically arming them with some very sophisticated weapons. Israel decided to take the opportunity of that which happened in Syria a few days ago and to immediately seize the moment and go and destroy that particular um, facility. And in a very unprecedented manner, Iran released pictures of the hangar, pictures of their victims, and Iran said that it will avenge uh, the death of its own people. This is the first time Iran is publicly admitting and confessing that it is in Syria. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I believe that um, that was a step that was necessary for us. And regarding the response to the chemical attack, we are leaving that to the superpower of the world, to, to the very leader of the free world who vowed not to sit and do nothing, but to respond. President Trump is right now seated in the White House and is uh, talking to uh, the French and the UK leaders in uh, somehow reaching a way of responding to that attack together as a mini coalition so he will not be standing all alone. You understand that as far as the UK, their um, anger towards Russia is, is skyrocketing right now for what Russia did to people on UK ground and you understand that the French themselves also uh, said that if chemical attack or an unconventional weapon will be used they also cannot sit and do nothing. Western Europe is terrified of the Russian aggression in the last few months and I believe that a message had to be sent to the Russians and the Iranians that they cannot do whatever they want, neither towards Israel nor towards the rest of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the pressure is mounting right now. The Chinese airliner, Hainan Airline, just canceled all of its flights to Israel. Their two flights to Tel Aviv were canceled. I bet they understand that the uh, airspace in that area right now is not safe. But if you think that only what's in the sky is being affected, you're very wrong. The satellite images of the last few hours from the um, um, naval base of Tarsus in Syria are showing that the Russians are actually taking all of their ships to sea and they're leaving the, the base in order to escape a potential imminent strike uh, by the United States and maybe its allies. Ladies and gentlemen, if that's not enough, the Syrians are now evacuating all of their air bases and ground bases and they are actually uh, moving towards uh, areas where Russian troops are located right now. Reports of the last few hours are that bombings already started but not in Damascus and not on the coast but rather on the eastern part. There are uh, two cities, Deir Azur and El, -Hamd El Hamdan, um, cities that are now um, being uh, bombarded by what uh, the, um, what the um, Rebels TV station says, anonymous airplanes. They could not really identify the type of the aircraft or what country they belong to. But one thing is for sure, Bashar al-Assad's forces are fleeing. They're on the run right now, not only from the coast, but also from the desert in, on, along the Euphrates. And the Americans are allowing now the rebels to move forward and secure their positions along the border with Jordan in the south, towards, almost towards Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, what we see right now is that this, the uh, Syrians understand that America is very, very serious. And if you, if you were 
uh, if you thought that President Donald Trump is going to cave in because the Russians flexed their muscles and said that they're going to shoot down rockets and they're going to stand for their um, Syrian friends and all of that, well, let me tell you something. Uh, President Trump vowed not to, uh, not to um, stop his plans, but also, uh, as you all know, the most famous tweet of the day, that he is definitely going to send rockets and those missiles will be very sophisticated and very smart. Uh, we're talking about a, a very determined president, unlike any American president that we've seen in the last 70 years. Now, you must understand, because of that determination right now, over the last two hours, the Russians have changed their tone. What do I mean when I say they have changed their tone? The Russian president called Benjamin Netanyahu. The Russian Kremlin just um, re released a statement that we prefer diplomatic solution to the problem. You see, and, and by the way, they already sent their ships to sea, which means they understand that there's someone serious in the White House right now, and he's not going to put up with all of their shenanigans, and he is definitely going to do what he promised to do. And it's a shocker for many, a shocker maybe from, from some of the people that are watching re, uh, me right now, because quite a few people, uh, it feels like every time there's a chemical attack, the same people are rising, I don't know where from, and they're saying, it's not Assad, Assad will never do that to his people. It's not Assad, Assad will never do that. Let me tell you something. Hitler also was perceived as a peace-loving person. I mean, people sat with Hitler and thought, oh my goodness, he's the greatest guy. And they went back home and they said, peace come to the world. And a few days later, World War II started. I want to tell you something, guys. You, you live elsewhere. We live in the Middle East. We know exactly who Bashar al-Assad is. We know exactly what he owns. We know exactly what he does. And we know exactly how he's doing things. He has a long history. It's not the first time he used gas, and it's a sarin gas, by the way, and it's not going to be the last time if we're not going to put an end to it. And it, all it takes is all of those conspiracy theory supporters that think that it's not him, and let's not touch him, and let's not, let's not do anything. Up until today, all of the chemical attacks in Syria were done by Assad, and it was proved by the World Health Organization and the UN, and every time they allowed UN inspectors to come, we found that it was true. He did it. In fact, Obama and Kerry reached an agreement to disarm him because he did what he did. And do you think they really disarmed him? Of course not. They did nothing but deceiving the world that everything is now good and everything is now great. And now in all of this confusion that people are trying to create as if deep state is doing that, as if there is, it's all one big show, I want to tell you something. There's people that died. There's almost 120 casualties from that thing, and more, over 500 people are treated in hospital right now. And if that's not enough, you might want to hear something right now that might shock you. But some of the Syrian reporters there, when they found the capsules of the chemical agent, they actually saw something very strange. They saw something very, very strange, and um, I would like to uh, show it to you. Um, it was um, it was the um, the um, German company that makes those things. Uh, apparently, the German company that makes those things um, um, is um, she so that company sold these things to Iran and not to Syria, which means that the Iranians most likely were those who provided those things to the Iranians. Um, let me find it so you can see exactly what we are talking about. Um, uh, because you really want to, to see that. Um, the company, by the way, was approached. And the, uh, and the company uh, 
admitted that they sold these things to Iran, and um, and that's what we have right now. I'll find it in a few seconds and um, and show it to all of you. Um, the company is the Krempel. That's the name of the company, and um, we, I have a picture of that particular uh, thing that they uh, that they um, that they had over there. Um, let me see if I have it right now. Okay, and um, I'll find it and I'll give it to you in a few seconds. Um, as of the last um, few minutes, we also heard that France and Britain and America had agreed on a coalition to attack. This is why every every uh, everything is on hold right now. Trump didn't want to be perceived as the only one who is fighting that type of evil. Um, um, Secretary Mattis already said we're ready. Uh, already reconnaissance flights were held across um, or in, along the coast of the of the Syrian coast. We know that um, there are um, fighter jets already in Incirlik in in Turkey. There are fighter jets already in Cyprus. We know that there are fighter jets also ready in other airports around uh, Syria, which I cannot. Um, I cannot uh, specify right now, um, and we know that um, several warships are on their way. One of them is already there. Uh, uh, Donald Cook is already there, and um, we have more on their way. It is going to be a combined attack, and it is going to hurt the Syrians very much. The Iranians are vowing to defend the Syrians. The Russians are vowing to defend the Syrians. If you're asking me, this is not going to lead to any world war. It is only going to make the Syrians um, almost gone in a sense of a, a regime. Um, we might even see the toppling of Assad finally. If anything, that is the target right now. Um, we might see him being even smuggled outside of Syria to Russia or to Iran or to other place unknown. But um, I believe that this time the effort is to topple Assad and not to be settled with anything less than that. I also believe that um, uh, Iran and Russia will not be able to um, to do anything to America, but I do know that eventually Israel will pay the price. Israel will pay the price because um, Israel is the big winner from the whole situation. Um, it's the Iranians that will be humiliated. It's the Syrian um, um, capability of attacking us that is going to be severely uh, hurt. And you can imagine that this whole buildup of um, hatred towards Israel and the will to revenge and the will to restore their dignity and pride um, will eventually lead them to do what the Bible say they will do, and that, of course, come and attack Israel. As of now, having this president in the White House, I don't believe that they are going to dare to do what they are planning on doing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are hesitating. How, uh, I mean, how come Trump is doing this or how come Trump is doing that? I know it's a shocker for many of you that there is someone who is so resilient and someone who is so determined, someone who is so um, not politically correct. Um, get used to it. There's a new sheriff in town. Get used to it. He is not a politician. And get used to it. Unle until he's gone from the White House, that's what we're going to get. Um, some people even hint that he might be the Antichrist. I, I think that you better take those ideas and hide them somewhere in the jungle because it, em it, it will embarrass you and everyone who hears you. This man is definitely not to to uh, uh, to receive any of those type of titles. Um, we've never seen an American president since Harry Truman so um, determined and so um, uh, um, so strongly uh, standing by Israel's side, and um, we've never seen anyone like this um, standing um, firm against evil and against all the atrocities. Let's not forget, people died here. Let's not forget, we're not dealing with Switzerland. We're not dealing with, uh, with uh, Sweden here. We're dealing with Iran. We're dealing with a country 
that is vowing to destroy another country and another nation. We're calling, we're dealing with Iran that is vowing to destroy even America. We're dealing with Russia that is, you know, is not the biggest uh, fan of America as, as of now. And the only reasons the Russians are in the Middle East right now is because of the, the, their will for power and for control and for gas and for oil. Why are Russians in Syria? Explain to me, why aren't they in Russia? Why are Iranians in Syria and not in Iran? You understand the will to expand and the will for more power and more control and oil and gas is something that is not too healthy. And if someone is saying, look, someone in the White House is saying, basically, you, you guys, if you want to be there, be there. But the last thing you can do is protect someone who's using chemical weapons against his own people. Um, Personally, I'm a little bit concerned that only chemical attacks are getting um, the attention of the world. You know, that chemical attack may have killed 70 or 80 people on the ground, but almost every day that number of people is dying all around Syria where nobody cares. I mean, drops of explosive, I mean, we're talking about helicopters dropping barrels of explosive um, in that with materials that are completely um, banned f uh, to use uh, by all um, military um, 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 rules and, 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 and uh, agreements. And the world is doing nothing and the world is saying nothing. Uh, Damascus has to cease to exist. The Bible says in Isaiah 17, it won't exist and it will be a ruinous heap. If anything, it's not going to be Jerusalem that is going to be destroyed. It's going to be Damascus. If anything, it's going to be Jerusalem to where Jesus will come back. Um, it's, if anything, it's going to be the nations that will come against Israel that will be humiliated by the God of Israel. So I'm, and, and if anything, we are going to go and be with the Lord before all hell breaks loose. My point this evening is very simple. Things are getting tight. Things are getting a little, maybe a little bit tensed around. And some of you might tend to be uh, a bit more um, uh, scared than others. But I, I want to give you a message this evening of hope and comfort. Hope that our gathering to be with the Lord is, is, is very soon. And, and, and comfort is that um, we are... Um, you know, we were not promised that in this world things will be great. We were promised in this world you'll have tribulations. But, but Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. It's not just that the believers will have tribulation. This world is all about those things. And uh, creation is, is longing for uh, its redemption as well. And we want... Um, to see the Lord and until then we want to make ourselves ready and to prepare ourselves and if there is one thing that I want you to know is that while the world is going crazy we may be the only people that can radiate and broadcast and project peace to our surrounding people are looking all around and watching the believers right now if believers are panicking right now and they are those who are supposed to have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And how will the non-believers should react? This is the time for us to run the race with endurance and perseverance. This is the time for us to show that we are seeking the things which are above. This is the time for us to show the world that there is, um, there is hope. And the hope is not in the leaders of the world and it's not in the things of the world. This is the time for us to, um, to put our trust in the Lord and not in the world. Um, I believe with all of my heart that Christians should be very, very, very careful not to be sucked into conspiracy theories and not to be sucked into the brainwashing of elements that have nothing to do with what's going on around. You need to trust me that 
as someone who lives in the Middle East, we know a little better than someone who sits somewhere in uh, his house, I don't know where, in Western Europe, in America, Canada, Australia, uh, and he's reading some things in the dark net and he's being fed with all of those conspiracy theories and then he shares people, you know, with people some, this is a whole fake thing, this, these people never really died, there was no chemical attack, it wasn't him, he loves his people. Guys, we know who we are dealing with and we know what was done, we know who did it, we have all the intelligence, we have all the evidences, and because, because we know who did it, because we know who did it, we are determined to score that account with them. Um, I also, um, uh, to settle that, 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 that account with them. I also want to tell you that um, um, I believe that within the t next 24 hours we're going to see some more action in the area, but I want to remind you that um, because someone in the White House is determined to follow up on his promises, the other side is now changing its tone. Let's remember that. Let's remember that we don't have any more in the White House someone who is weak. We have someone who is strong. If I was an American today, I would have been very, very proud of who I have. Now, you may not like the style, you may not like uh, the way things are tweeted and the way things are said, but I want to tell you something, in this jungle, you have to sometimes say things just like that, and, 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 and that may, that tweet may have caused the Russians to rethink and recalculate their route more than any diplomatic, um, you know, uh, conversations between envoys from here and envoys from there. Sometimes that's what it takes. I want to uh, I want to share with you also that um, as far as Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu just took part in the Holocaust uh, memorial service, but uh, in the hours prior to the service and right now, right after, he's seated right now with his closest advisors, with the Israeli chief of staff, with the head of the Israeli intelligence, and with his personal advisors, and Benjamin Netanyahu right now also has to take some very interesting and crucial decisions. Should the Iranians attack, Israel already announced that it will make sure Assad will be toppled and that regime will be gone. As I said, this is what's in stake right now. That's, what, that's the price that we are, as an international community, that we should uh, demand that this monster will be removed from power. Now, if you're telling me, well, if he will be removed, who will reign? Well, do you think he reigns? He's not reigning. He's butchering his people. He understood that the, the, the rebels in the city of Duma are, are well entrenched and it takes too long to fight them. And he realized, I better do it quickly and they will give up. And that's what he did. He dropped those bombs. He killed those innocent people and the rebels gave up. He wanted to do it fast. Now, you're probably saying, Wait a minute, but why now? It's just because he sees that nobody's dealing with Iran, nobody's dealing with North Korea. He's, he understands that the world is allowing those things to happen and nobody touches them. And he says, wait a minute, <laughs> I can do it. I might get some criticism, but the world will forget two weeks later and now move on. We were there before. It was two years ago. Right, uh, excuse me, one year ago, around this time, that he dropped bombs in Khan Shaykhun up north, and the Russians covered up for him then as well. And look, a year passed, and he did it again. And I'll tell you something the blood of the innocent people in Duma and maybe in other places will be on our hands if we do nothing. That's plain and simple. Um, I also want to tell you that uh, 
if decisive measures will be taken, the North Koreans are watching and the Iranians are watching. And if they see that there is a new boss and a new sheriff in town and that he is not hesitating to, to do what needs to be done, they will think twice before they pull out their tricks. So I want to tell you something. A lot is in stake right now. A lot is on the table right now. And in the next 12 to 24 hours, once he gets the coalition that he needs, President Trump is going to strike. And it's not even if it is going to be. It's only a matter of when. The decision was already made. Um, again, the only reason why he's not doing that right now is so he will get a, 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 a alliance of more than one country such as Britain and France and it will be a, a united international front against the atrocities of Assad and the covering up of the Russians and the Iranians. So this is what we're waiting for. That's what is going to happen. The uh, things are changing right now. The military of Assad is on the run. The, the Russians are on the run. Uh, they changed their tone. They want diplomacy right now. The Iranians understand something bad is happening. And all of this will eventually lead to the mid-May decision of President Trump to pull out of the Iranian deal. And by that, to make it collapse and make them lose hundreds of billions of dollars. A lot is on the table right now, a lot. And I can tell you one thing, everybody's eyes are right now on the American president. His resilience is going to radiate to the whole world something. And his uh, weakness will tell the world something else. The weakness of the pre previous president told the world we can do whatever we want to anyone we want and nobody's going to pay the price. The resilience of a, president's, of a president today will prove something completely different. So I want to encourage you to pray for President Trump and for his decision making. I want to uh, also I want, I want you to pray for the Syrian people that are caught in between. We must not forget it's not about Assad and Trump and Putin. There are innocent people that are caught in between. They're the ones that are paying the price. They're the ones that are being butchered. They're the ones that are being gassed. They're the ones that are being led as sheep to slaughter right now. We must pray for them. And of all things, we must remember that our redemption, indeed, is drawing near. As believers, tomorrow I'm going to share a message on running the race. And Paul said that he's afraid to run the race in vain. Is it possible to run the race in vain? Yes, if you're not sharing the gospel, if you, know, if you don't live life of believers, if it's not part of you, in you, who you are, and if you're not communicating the gospel to the leaders of the world as, as much as to the simple people around you, you are running the race in vain. Let us not run the race in vain. And let us run the race as those who want to win. And, 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 and remember that we need to look up at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So, from Athens, Greece, with the Acropolis behind me, I want to um, conclude this update with uh, the ironic blessing upon all of you. And um, we're going to have a very interesting 24 hours ahead of us. Stay tuned. Follow me and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Behold Israel, our Facebook, Behold Israel, and my Instagram account, Behold Israel, one word. So let's pray. Yevarechecha Adonai veishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panavelecha veichunecha. Yisa Adonai panavelecha veyasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face at you and may He be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and may He give you peace. Shalom. 
that peace that surpasses all understanding that can only be given by the Prince of Peace, who is the Lord of Peace, who can give you peace now and everywhere and at all time. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you. God bless you. Keep us in your prayers as we continue our project right now with Bible Lands Unveil. And uh, we will, uh, you can see that I update on Facebook almost every few hours when there are things for you to know. Do not get sucked into the conspiracy theories and do not bash your president. Be respectful and be prayerful. Thank you, and God bless you, and Shalom from Athens. Bye-bye.